Hello everyone and welcome to South Asia Sphere, Himal's fortnightly podcast on all things South Asia, where we bring you a roundup of the big stories in the region. We are your hosts Raisa and Ritika and this roundup was recorded on 2nd February and covers the period from 19th January to 2nd February. In India, there are cracks emerging in the opposition-led India National Developmental Inclusive Alliance two months before general elections. Mamata Banerjee, the head of the All India Trinamool Congress, and Bihar's Chief Minister Nitish Kumar both pulled out of the coalition, citing disagreement with the Congress party on seat allocations. Now, adding to the tensions was what's called the Bharat Jodo Yatra, a journey across India which Congress leader Gandhi undertook without consulting other parties in the alliance. Now, Kumar has chosen to join the National Democratic Alliance, which is a coalition of parties led by the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, while Banerjee has said that Trinamool will go it alone in West Bengal. Kumar's decision is likely to benefit the BJP in Bihar, particularly as he spearheaded a caste census in the state that the opposition-led India Alliance hoped to use as a campaigning tool. Banerjee's decision is being interpreted as an attempt to secure Trinamool's future in West Bengal, although Congress still remains hopeful of forging an alliance. Both resignations have struck a blow to the opposition's chances of posing a challenge to the ruling BJP in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. There was a brawl in Parliament in the Maldives during a crucial vote on Maldivian President Mohamed Moizu's cabinet. At least one MP was hospitalized as opposition Maldivian Democratic Party refused to grant approval to four members of Moizu's cabinet. By the 30th of January, all four MPs had been reappointed. The MDP has already questioned the legality of this move. The vote for cabinet approval has been delayed since December 2023 as the MDP, which retained a majority in parliament, argued that the new president had not outlined a clear mandate for government ministries. The MDP is also planning to submit a no-confidence motion against President Moizu in parliament and says that it has gathered the required number of signatures to do so. Moizu faces tough challenges ahead as he attempts to take control of the Maldives parliament and address voter issues around law and order and corruption. Pakistan says it has credible evidence that Indian agents assassinated two Pakistan citizens. An investigation found that the deaths of Muhammad Riaz and Shahid Latif in September and October 2023 had been coordinated by an Indian agent working in a third country, Pakistan's Foreign Secretary, Muhammad Cyrus Sajid Kazi, claimed. Kazi alleged that Pakistani authorities had evidence of transactions linking the killings to an Indian agent. Now, India has dismissed the charge as false and malicious anti-India propaganda. Kazi also referred to Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's claim that India had carried out the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijar in June 2023. India denied the accusations at the time, calling them absurd. In November 2023, U.S. prosecutors also accused Indian intelligence agents of attempting to assassinate Gurpatwant Singh Panun, which India has said it is investigating. Both Nijar and Panun were pro-Khalistan activists advocating for a separate Sikh state in Punjab. Nepal's ruling alliance won 18 out of 19 seats in its National Assembly polls, which were held on the 25th of January. The CPN Maoist Centre Alliance won 18 out of 59 seats in the National Assembly, with Nepali Congress gaining 10 seats. While 19 seats will be filled through elections, one candidate will be nominated by the President on the Cabinet's recommendation. The newly elected members will join Nepal's Parliament on the 3rd of March. The National Assembly polls were a setback for Sharma Oli's CPN-UML, which now finds itself in third position in terms of seats in the upper house, with the Maoist Centre and Congress, the two largest players. Interestingly, despite the ruling alliance's dominance in the election, the opposition, CPN-UML, won in Koshi province after some members of the ruling alliance appear to have cast their vote for the opposition candidate. 13 local representatives also boycotted the polls amid reports that political parties were nominating undeserving candidates for the seats. On the 25th of January, 
The Taliban detained Afghan poet Izatullah Zawab, who heads the magazine Mina, or Love, continuing the crackdown on independent media and freedom of expression in the country. Family members said Zawab was arrested while traveling from Kabul to the eastern Nangahar province. The Taliban has not provided a reason for Zawab's detention. However, he was known for his critical poetry, calling out corrupt religious officials and militants. Zawab's arrest is only the most recent report of writers being detained without explanation in Afghanistan, with at least three other arrests reported in the space of a week. On the 22nd of January, the Taliban also arrested Afghan journalist Ehsan Akbari, a reporter for Japan's Kyoto News Agency in Kabul. Akbari was detained for nine days. Ahmad Jawad Rasuli and Abdul Haq Hamidi, both from the Gardesh A. Etihad News Agency, were detained on the 18th of January and released in two days after posting bail. According to the media watchdog Afghanistan Journalist Center, there were 61 journalist and media worker arrests and 168 instances of press freedom violations reported in Afghanistan in December 2023. On 24 January, Sri Lanka passed the online safety bill, which will impose penalties on social media users for quote-unquote false or harmful speech. The bill also holds internet companies accountable for the content posted on their platforms. An industry body of global internet and technology companies has already raised concerns about the bill. While the bill was supposedly introduced to combat cybercrime, it has been criticized by the rights groups. They say that the proposed legislation would effectively stifle dissent and freedom of speech ahead of planned elections this year. However, the bill was pushed through with 108 MPs voting in favour of the bill and 62 against. Sri Lanka joins a number of countries across the region that have passed legislation impacting online freedom of expression. Bangladesh's Cyber Security Act, which was passed in 2024, continues to replicate broad provisions in the Digital Security Act. The DSA was used to arrest activists, journalists and even children. In December 2023, even India pushed through a telecommunications bill which enabled government surveillance, undermined encryption and allowed for continued disruptions of internet connectivity. In July 2023, across the border in Pakistan, they also passed the e-safety bill and personal data protection bill with minimal consultation, to much criticism as it allowed for government surveillance in the guise of protecting online users. On the 20th of January, India announced plans to fence the border with Myanmar amidst escalating conflict between Myanmar's armed groups and the military junta. In recent weeks, India has been returning junta forces who have been fleeing across the border into India. Armed groups briefly took control of Mongmit in northern Shan state on the 1st of February, while the Arakan army seized a Myanmar military base in Mrok Yu Township which is in Rakhine, on the same day. Junta forces also retook control of the town of Si Seng in southern Shan state on the 30th of January. Under fire by armed groups, the junta in Myanmar have launched aerial attacks and military strikes with over 554 civilians reportedly killed since October 2023. While the escalating conflict in Myanmar is one reason for India wanting to fence the border, Analysts say the Indian government may be trying to reduce the number of refugees from Myanmar entering Manipur, which has been grappling with communal violence. While Manipur's government has attributed the violence to a large influx of Kuki refugees from Myanmar, a government panel has identified only 2,187 immigrants from Myanmar in April 2023. On the 31st of January, a Varanasi district court allowed Hindu pilgrims to offer prayers in the southern cellar of Gyanwapi Mosque. The court directed that a pujari nominated by the Sri Kashi Vishwanath Temple Trust should be allowed to lead the prayers. Shortly after the announcement, a Hindu group placed a poster over the signboard of Gyanwapi Mosque, changing the name to Gyanwapi Mandir. Legal representatives for the Anjuman Intizamiya Masjid Committee, which manages the Gyanwapi Mosque, said that they would challenge the decision in a higher court. The court order came days after four Hindu women filed petitions before the Supreme Court seeking a survey of a sealed area of the mosque. 
The Gyanwapi Mosque is a contested site, with Hindus saying that they have found evidence of a shivalingam on the premises, while Muslims say the structure is a part of an ablution tank. A report from the Archaeological Survey of India found that there was a Hindu temple that existed before the construction of the mosque. However, academics have also pointed out that the ASI sometimes find itself strangulated by majoritarian preference for certain interpretive frameworks of Indian culture at the cost of objective investigations. Well, that's it for the news roundup this time. Thank you for listening. While we are working to upgrade and improve our podcasts, including experimenting with different formats, we would please like you to stay tuned for more in the coming weeks. In the meantime, please consider supporting Himal by becoming a member. We are a fully independent non-profit media organization and we rely on listeners like you to sustain and grow our work. You can see our membership plans at www.himalmag.com membership. And we've also included a link to our membership page in the episode notes below. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. If you want to help us bring you more updates and stories, you can sign up for membership at www.himalmag.com slash membership. We've got a range of membership plans for you to choose from. You'll get access to our archival newsletter specially curated for you and even Himal's iconic right side up map with its startling new perspective on South Asia. And if you don't want to miss out on future episodes of South Asia Sphere, head to the link in our notes to sign up for our newsletter which will bring you the updates right to your mailboxes every fortnight. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, or wherever it is that you like to listen to your favorite podcasts. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback for the current format of South Asia Sphere, or just want to talk about how we can make it more accessible for you, don't forget to head to the link in our episode notes. We'd love to hear from you. And that's it for today and for this episode. See you next time.